I hope you're all well and safe. And uh, thank you for registering for our first training of the year. Uh, as I said, my name is Maria Zahra, and I'm the 2023 JCI Lebanon president. Uh, for those who don't know us, um, JCI Lebanon is part of a membership-driven global network of dedicated and enterprising young leaders aged 18 to 40, and we are active in more than 115 countries. So we take our members on a leadership journey, providing an environment for them to develop their true potential through four types of actions, projects, events, trainings, and programs. And we align these four actions with four areas of development opportunity, being community impact, individual development, business and entrepreneurship, and international cooperation. Globally, JCI has more than 200,000 members, including members in JCI Lebanon. And I'm so happy to see such a big turnout from all over the world. We had people uh, from uh, JCI India, JCI Morocco, JCI Nepal, Dutch Caribbean, Syria, and Madagascar register. So I hope to see them soon here. And I would like to... to uh, uh, introduce again 2022 JCI Jordan President Aya. Um, so this training is part of our ongoing officers training that we provide our board members throughout the year. We wanted to open it up to the public this time to get to know our society and their needs. Um, before we begin, I would like to introduce our trainer for tonight, 2020 JCI VP Mohammed Hijazi. Uh, Mohammed is a leading communication consultant and trainer who is passionate about growing small and medium businesses, startups, and nonprofits. He is certified from Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter, Reuters, HubSpot, the U.S. State Department, and JCI. He has also transformed strategies for organizations like the EU, the World Economic Forum, the UN, the British Council, Leo Burnett, Dubai Islamic Bank, and Burger King. And he has worked with startups, CEOs uh, from Silicon Valley to London and Dubai. So thank you, Mohammed, for being with us tonight. And the floor is yours. Thank you, President Maria. I'm very happy uh, to be with you once again uh, with JCI Lebanon. I'm very happy to see uh, 2022 JCI Jordan President Aya and uh, uh, members and non-members from all over the world. Um, so today we'll be uh, talking about uh, how to attract and engage sponsors. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat and we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the um, training. And uh, yeah, let's start. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. No. Yes. Great. Okay. So let's start with uh, a, a simple definition of uh, what a sponsorship means. Um, a sponsorship is a means of supporting an event, project, or organization by providing money or other resources of value to the activity in question. So, so the sponsor generally receives advertising space or other publicity at the event in exchange for its support. And we're going to be talking today about a lot of different um, uh, steps into the sponsorship process. Uh, so it's very important to get the right sponsor to join forces with you, with your, you or your event, and it can make a big impact on the success of your event or project. It is a guaranteed revenue source, and if you partner with relevant companies, the relationship will also uh, provide added value to attendees. So it's very important whenever we're thinking about the sponsor, not to just uh, get any random company that's willing to give us money because sometimes uh, people are bored of advertising and they will not even notice the sponsor or they will ignore them. Um, so it's important to have uh, a sponsor that's relevant to your organization and cause and event, but also relevant to the attendees and it will provide value to them as well. So first, let's start with a few rules for sponsorship hunters. Um, sponsorships are more than just sticking logos and everything. Yeah, definitely the logo of a company is important to place in, in different, but it's it's more than that. Follow some of these rules. Follow these rules to ensure that you find the right sponsor for your organization. So the first thing to understand is that there's no such thing as free money. Sponsorship is not just about your needs; it's also about the sponsor's needs. 
it won't work if the relationship is too lopsided one way or another. So what we're saying here is that a sponsorship has to be beneficial for both your organization and the sponsor. Uh, if the sponsor is not getting a lot from this sponsorship, they might not do the sponsorship or they might not sponsor you again in your next project or event. So you have to figure out a way where you're adding value to, to the sponsor. Uh, in ways we'll talk about it in a bit, but it's very important to always have this mutually beneficial relationship. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that sponsors don't have to love you. So sponsors don't need to share your passion for your cause in order to sponsor you. They just need to be able to see the commercial benefit. It is important though that you have compatible values. So I'm not saying here that you should get any sponsor even if they don't, uh, even if they don't have compatible values. But sometimes a sponsor will not, might not be very involved in the activity that you're doing. So if you are doing an activity with children, a bank might come and sponsor you for a, for a commercial reason that they think they can uh, attract the parents to come and work with that bank, but they might not care about the children cause that you're working with. With that being said, you should not uh, get sponsors that are opposing to your values. So if we are doing a campaign about the environment, for example, you shouldn't be uh, involving a sponsor that's actively polluting your community. So if there are a polluter in your community, the attendees will feel very, uh, uh, very wrong about the sponsor because, and it would be very hypocritical that you're taking money from a sponsor that's polluting the, the community for an environment project. So always try as much as possible to have compatible values when you're doing um, a sponsorship. It's also very important to look for a, for a good fit. Um, do your very best to gain sponsorship from companies, organizations, or brands that seem a natural fit with your event or organization. It is exhausting to have to be continuously trying to ram a square peg into a round hole. So this means that if, if you get a sponsor that's not a good fit, it will be very tiring for you to accommodate them and trying as much as possible uh, to make them happy. And it's always your job to make a sponsor happy because, if, because that's where your money is coming from. But sometimes a sponsor is not worth it, either if it's not too much money or they're uh, very annoying or demanding too much. If you don't have a good relationship with them, uh, it will really cause a lot of issues throughout your project management. What's also important is for you to know that a sponsorship is a job for a team. So it shouldn't be just one person who is um, managing and organizing all the sponsors because on the day of the event that person might be very busy and when when the sponsor comes to the event and they want uh, to be uh, pampered for example or they want to be shown around or uh, talk to someone it's it's very important that your whole organization understands this uh, that this sponsorship is important and uh, different members from your organization are able uh, to meet and talk to the sponsor and you have to prepare all of your team to treat your sponsors like marketing partners as i said before it's not just about the logo Sponsorships are about more than sticking the logo on everything. While your sponsorship agreement might include use of logos, it's that all you've got, if that's all you got to offer them, then you can't really ask them for much in return. So if you go to a sponsor and tell them, I can give you your logo on, on our roll-up banner and our posters and our social media, that's not a lot that you're actually giving them. So today we'll talk about some, what other things that you can give them in your event. But you have to keep in mind that it's not just about the logo. Even if you print the logo a million places, it might not get any sales or any publicity um, for your sponsor. Another very important thing is to get started early. You can't have an event next week and start looking for a sponsor this week. It takes a lot of time. And if it's a big company, it takes a lot of time to make the decision internally. So don't count on starting your sponsorship search one day and getting it all uh, all under the way next. These things take a lot of time. So you need to allow plenty of time in your uh, forward planning. So if you have an event in six months, you should start now. Uh, and sometimes even that is too late. Uh, and I'll talk about the timing as well today, but you have to keep in mind this process takes a lot of time. Another important thing is that when, once you have a, a, sponsor, a sponsor confirmed, you have to get it in writing. 
because some if you don't have a contract with uh, with a sponsor they will sometimes flake out and will not pay you any money or change the terms of the agreement because it's not written down so a very important thing is to have uh, all the details of your arrangement uh, in writing and that way no one is left in any doubt as to what has been agreed to so create a contract if you want a template just google a sponsorship contract and uh, you'll find a lot of templates and you'll be able to change whatever you need to fit um, your needs also another thing that's very important about sponsors is to aim high it's better to get one or two big meaningful sponsorships uh, in place that than a lot of small ones because that way there'll be less clutter for them and less sponsor management for you. Sponsor management takes a lot of time and sometimes it takes two or three people to manage them. So if you can get two big sponsors that cover the expenses for your event and make you a profit, uh, and instead of getting 10 or 15 small sponsors, that would be much better for your time management and for your stress levels and for everyone that's working on it, especially that almost everyone here uh, are volunteers for the four different organizations. So whenever you're trying to get uh, sponsors, aim for the bigger ones. Uh, I'm not saying to neglect smaller ones, but it's if you if you have a goal to approach big companies with bigger budgets, that might make your life much easier. Also, as I said, these things take time. And part of that is allowing time for relationship building. Uh, don't ever think that once you've got the check, your job is done. As with most things in fundraising, sponsorship are all about the relationship. You need to do, uh, you need to be in regular contact. You need to give them thanks when it's due. And you need to ensure that you're always doing what you said you'd do. So the sponsorship period is more than just getting that check in your hand or getting the money in Lebanon, we don't use checks anymore, but cash, if you get the money cash, then um, you you that's not the end of it. You have to keep uh, making them happy, giving them updates about the event as, as you are planning it and showing them where their money is going. Uh, because if they feel that their money is going to someone's pocket and it's not being used to, to improve the event, they will not be happy. So it's it's a lot about building relationships uh, and keeping them happy because you also want them to come back again and sponsor you for another event. So how do we start? Where do we start from? Uh, we do, first of all, you need to be well prepared. You have to uh, be well prepared in order to achieve the desired results. You can't approach a sponsor without having done the necessary research and work. So here are the first few things that you um, need to uh, consider. First of all, you need to define the fundamentals of your project. Before you start finding the right sponsors, you have to articulate and really think about what are the differentiating factors of your project. Um, so there are, these are a few questions to reflect on to help you uh, get the, to the core of your project identity. What is the overall vision of your project? What overreaching goals are you trying to achieve through the project? And what are the values your uh, of your organization and your project? Once you have these written down, uh, even if you were to find companies who are interested in your project, you will only win them over once they buy into the project goals and vision. Thus, make sure to have these um, core functions uh, explicitly defined before beginning your search. Being able to clearly communicate these values will be very crucial in helping you find these sponsors. Another thing that's very important to know is know why companies want to sponsor, either you or in general. So if, if the goal is to find companies that are interested in sponsoring projects, the primary step should be to understand why these companies are looking for sponsorships. In the end, sponsoring a project or an event uh, is a significant investment. So it's important to become knowledgeable on the types of return on investment or ROI that these companies So whenever that person who gave you money, either the sponsorship manager or the marketing manager, they gave you money, they have to go back to their boss at the end of the event and tell them, this event was worth it for us. We paid $5,000 and we got one, two, three, four. So that is how they measure their return on investment, either 
uh, how many social media followers they got, how many new customers they got, how many new leads they got. We'll talk about that in a bit. So always have that in mind that whenever you're getting a sponsor, they need to get something in return and something tangible, not just their logo. So here are some of uh, some benefits of sponsoring for, that you need to think about for the company. So first of all, it's increasing their social media impressions. Um, because projects and events are a great platform for social media content, companies are the, uh, see the perfect opportunity to elevate their social media presence through sponsoring projects. If your project is particularly well suited for social media sharing, companies will be very much interested in promoting their own uh, social media channels and thinking of ways to push partner, uh, partnered uh, content. If executed properly, this can be a win-win situation for both of you. So what, what we're saying here is that some companies really care about in increasing their social media following. And if you have a very uh, very exciting project that can be shared on social media, such as when we did World Cleanup Day, for example, or any other project that uh, is very uh, flashy that you can share on social media where you get a lot of interaction, companies are going to be very happy to create content for you, create videos that they're participating in, in your event. And you also have to create videos or content about them participating. So that is one of the benefits that they might be looking for. Another one is collecting customer leads. So sometimes they would ask you for uh, a list of the people who attended the event and their emails so that they can send them a marketing material. Um, so many, many companies are excited at the prospect of getting more potential customers through sponsorship, especially if the attendee demographic overlaps with the target customer base. Uh, companies see sponsorship as a great opportunity to grow the sales pipeline and increase the number of potential closed deals. So uh, this is what we're talking about when you when we said that you have to think about companies that are aligned with your values or are the values of your project. So if you are talking about uh, health and uh, and healthy food, for example, and that's your event, you can sponsor with organic uh, and natural food suppliers or small businesses. They'll be very happy to uh, show their products and get more customers to the people attending the event. So that's one thing that they'll be looking for. Another thing is to gain access to a specific demographic. So sometimes companies have a difficulty uh, tapping into a certain demographic due to limited resources or general lack of exposure. However, sponsorships offer a way to get in front of a specific target audience that may have been inaccessible otherwise. Companies are especially interested in sponsorship projects if the sponsorship can give, uh, can give the brand the exposure it needs in regards to a specific demographic. So this is also very, very important. One of the things that uh, spon sponsors look for is who is the audience that's attending this event or this project and how can I benefit from them? Usually, if you're a JCI member uh, and you're doing a JCI project, sponsors are going to uh, be interested in your project because you, of your audience. And who's the audience of JCI mainly nowadays? It's uh, millennials and Gen Z, so mainly the youth. So sometimes it's very hard to reach the youth demographic, um, and sponsors would be very excited to partner with JCI uh, for projects um, dealing with the youth. Sometimes you might get a sponsor for, uh, let's say, children if your event is about children. So it could be like a cornflakes brand or diapers brand or anything that's related to children that would be very aligned because your event is related to that demographic uh, and, and so forth. So it's also, it's very important to keep these three things in mind. There might be other benefits, but, but these are the top three that... Uh, companies need might be looking into the social media exposure, collecting uh, leads or new customers and gaining access to a specific demographic. Okay, so now let's talk about defining the sponsorship criteria. Once you establish the criteria uh, of the types of sponsors that you want to partner with, it is crucial. Uh, this is very crucial for the overall success of your, the sponsorship. So it's helpful to keep in mind questions when speaking to potential sponsors to see if they would align with your project vision. So these are four questions you have to ask them. And based on these questions, you, you can get an idea if this is a good sponsorship or not. 
you ask them, how do you see your organization's mission aligning with our event project or uh, organization? What are your core company values and key brand values? What are some key return on investment metrics you wish to increase through the sponsorship? And what are uh, your main goals as an event sponsor? So once you ask them these questions, you get an idea if you are able to, to give them what they need. If they tell you, I want to get at least 10 new customers or I want to get more exposure for my product, you have to figure out ways where you can give them that. And if you cannot, then you, you tell them, I'm sorry, I cannot uh, partner with you on this event because I cannot give you uh, 10 customers or 100 customers or whatever they're asking for. So how do I find these companies? You can research companies that have sponsored projects similar to yours. Uh, a good place to start would be to look at uh, other events or projects in your area that are similar to yours and to check their sponsor pages. So you go on their website or on their social media and see who their sponsors are uh, and try to contact those. So if these companies were interested in forming partnerships with these events or activities, there's a good chance they'll be interested in yours. So if possible, uh, and if they're not a, a direct competitor, so sometimes if there's a partner that, that has similar events, you can get in contact with them, with their project manager, and ask them for tips on shaping your sponsorship package. Conversations like these will provide key insight as to what these companies are looking for. Many times I was hosting events and I was, I was able to get sponsors through other sponsors or other partners that we had. So you ask them, you tell them, hey, we have a problem getting this thing. Sometimes it's cash. Sometimes you want to get a printing partner. Sometimes you want to get uh, a venue that's for free to host your event. So if you ask around in your network, especially with partners that you already have or uh, other events that you've attended, they, they will be most likely be able to help you and recommend you for with other companies or sponsors. So what are the, the best companies and how do you, what are the criteria that you need to think about whenever you're approaching companies? Um, you, you have to think about companies with sufficient budgets. So a lot of companies are very small and they will not have money to, to sponsor you or the resources to give you things that you might need. So instead of wasting your time, always try to think about companies with sufficient budget. Also, another indicator is that companies that have advertising or marketing departments, because these uh, departments are um, show that the company is big enough. If they don't have a marketing department, they might not have enough money even to, to market themselves, so they might not sponsor you. So if you know that someone who works in the marketing department and, and it's a specific company, that would be a good person to approach and that'd be a good company to approach. And also, if you have one or two sponsors now, or if you have sponsors in the past, you can ask them and get referrals um, for other sponsors. Uh, other ways where you can find corporate sponsors is to gather a list of prospects with uh, contact info from last year's projects or from, from before. It's also very important as JCI members to have a database of sponsors that sponsored you as an organization, because as you know, we change every year. Uh, all the uh, positions change every year and five years down the line, everyone would have been changed. So keeping a database of uh, of uh, partners and sponsors with their contact information and how much they uh, sponsored you for is a very good thing to, to keep going for the future. Also have your product committee members make a list of businesses they have connections with. So this is uh, usually how things happen. Someone knows uh, and his, uh, his uncle owns a company, his friend owns a company, uh, his third cousin owns a company. So these are very valuable because uh, you can start there with building these connections and start there with asking, asking for sponsors. Also ask your boards and members who they know at local businesses. So even if they don't own a business, someone works at a, uh, at a restaurant or a bar or a hotel, they can, that can be very helpful. And that's usually how we start getting sponsors. Um, look through your donor or sponsor database uh, from the past, as I was talking about. Um, look through any suppliers that you have for sp sponsored prospects. So sometimes you have suppliers that you work with uh, when you do printing or when you get uh, make awards or
and it's only sold as the community for companies that have a mission that is aligned with yours. So look who's doing similar things, which companies are working on the environment, which companies really care about recycling, which companies care about children, et cetera. So uh, here's, you need to focus on the key decision makers when you're approaching uh, a sponsor. In the end, it will only be a handful of people who make the ultimate decision to sponsor your project. With that in mind, make sure to reach out to those individuals sooner or later. So there are tools such as LinkedIn or Hunter.io. They are very helpful for targeting these relevant stakeholders. Once you find their contact information, send them personalized sponsorship emails that would pique their interest. The more you know about each stakeholder, the more you're able to craft the ideal messaging to further persuade them to become a sponsor. And we'll talk in a bit about who, who these people are. Um, so right now, um, avoid the obvious titles. So sometimes whenever, whenever you're looking for a sponsor, you're going to me directly message the CEO of the company uh, or the president or like the big shots, VPs, things like that. And or the, or the sponsorship manager who might also be getting a lot of uh, swamp with a lot of offers uh, right now. So uh, try as much as possible not to target the obvious titles, especially not the CEO or the president, because 90% of the time, unless you know them personally, they're not going to even respond to your email or even read it. Um, so who are you going to, to talk to? Always think about the brand team. The brand team or, or the brand managers focus on the public image of the company, um, which is one of the strongest benefits of sponsoring an event or project. So put them at the top of your list when reaching out. So who are the brand comp uh, brand team? It's usually either the advertising or the marketing team. Uh, they usually have the budgets to, to sponsor companies, and they would be able to give you a, a, a quick answer if... Uh, they'll be able to sponsor you or not. So usually they are the ones who would answer you um, about sponsorship. Also for smaller companies, follow the money. Anyone in charge of budgeting at a national or regional level will likely be in control of funds available for uh, sponsorships. So if it's a small company that doesn't have a marketing team, check who the accountant is or the accounting team, and they will be able to refer you. They'll be able to uh, give you an idea if they have uh, enough money or they do usually do sponsorships or not. And also consider who you already know. There is no reason why a company you already have a relationship with couldn't be your sponsor. Start within your network and reach out to people you have dialogue with already. So if you know someone in a company, even if they don't work in any in marketing, if you know someone who works in operation really well, they can refer you and kind of give a recommendation to their marketing team that I know this person he's trustworthy they're doing a great project uh you should you should sponsor them so whenever you have a referral referral in the company try to use that as much as possible because that's how basically decisions get made also this is really really important getting the timing right when should you uh, ask for sponsorships so experts say that May, June, and September are the best months since sales will be most likely high. And when sales are high, uh, companies will be more generous, generous to uh, sponsor you. The holiday months, so let's say Christmas, Easter, Ramadan, uh, the new year, are the worst times of the year to pitch sponsors because companies are spending their marketing budgets on holiday promotions. So aside from doing maybe charity uh, events that mostly we don't do at JCI, you will not be able to get a lot of money around the holiday months because that's when there's a lot of marketing spend and uh, to promote the products, especially if it's big companies that are uh, B two C uh, pro have B two C products such as like food or uh, cleaning supplies, shampoo. Any big company that wants to promote things, there's they're promoting them during uh, these times. Also make sure to send your proposal at least one month before the fin financial fiscal closing of companies, usually done in July or December, so that they include your sponsorship in their budget. So a lot of companies uh, do their uh, uh, sponsorship budgets and agree on projects one year before. So it's usually at the end of their fiscal year. Some companies, uh, the end is in June and some of them uh, is in December. So you have to make sure that the company that you're sending to hasn't fi hasn't finalized their budget for the upcoming year. Uh, that way, if you're most likely to get more money if you send it before the uh, end of the fiscal year, 
so always keep these dates in mind. Uh, usually it's in December, but some companies have, especially big ones, finish it in June. Um, so make sure, and especially with JCI, when you're handing over in, in December, to have a plan and start approaching uh, your uh, sponsors before the end of the year. Because when, when the new year comes, and uh, they, they will come and tell you, we already spent our budget or we already allocated our budget with for events uh, for the upcoming year. Come and talk to us uh, at the end of the year. So make sure that you always keep these three things in mind. May, June, and September are the uh, most likely months with the highest sales. Don't try uh, around the holiday months and try as much as possible to get in your sponsorship uh, requests before the end of the fiscal year. So now that you know some of the, you have done some of this preparation, you need to create a sponsorship kit. Uh, a sponsorship package that you have to send to sponsors on your list. Your goal is to make your sponsorship appear to be a win-win business deal rather than a simple donation. So here we're not asking for donations, we're asking for a sponsorship that they will gain something. The first thing that you need to prepare for um, your uh, your sponsorship kit is to write an executive summary. So an executive summary basically is a, a, a mission statement about the project or event you hope to uh, have sponsored. So this should uh, only be around 250 to 300 words, maximum of one page that describes in detail what a sponsorship will fund, why you seek sponsorships, and how being a sponsor will benefit them. So a short summary of your project and what they uh, will gain by participating as a sponsor. Your, your sponsorship kit should also include uh, an overview about your organization and past projects. This is very important to build trust and build your brand with the sponsor. So what past events have you done and how, why were they successful? Um, maybe you can also include past sponsors, especially if you've gotten big sponsors in the past. And also, what is your organization? What, what are the goals that you're doing? Uh, and how old you are, these types of things as an organization. Also, as we spoke before, it's very important to put the target audience or the attendee profile. Who is attending this event and how are they relevant to that sponsor? Also, what is the event or project purpose? And also include some photos or videos of the project, um, some posters that you've done, any material that you created. Uh, you can also show them templates or mock posters of what where their logo will show, for example, uh, to get them more excited. Also, what are the sponsorship packages or benefits uh, that they can choose from? And I'll talk about this in a bit. Also, it's very important to include the terms and conditions. Uh, so this is a kind of like, as I said, a contract in which uh, you include what happens if either party doesn't fulfill their obligations or the event was canceled, uh, any other uh, regulations that you want to put in there, how you want to get paid, uh, in, in which form do you want them to be, in, to be paid in cash or wire transfer, um, any sort of details about the whole sponsorship process, you have to include it here. Also provide a call to action, which is something uh, like an action verb that they have to do at the end of it. So sponsor us now and get more sales, sponsorship, uh, sponsor us now and uh, meet our members, Wh whatever benefit that you have created in a way that is calling for action from them. And you always have to include a contact person who is the person that they should contact if they need more information or if they have any questions or anything of the sort. So in terms of the sponsorship packages, there's two sponsorship models. The tiered sponsorship model, which is a traditional approach where a variety of features are included in the sponsorship package offering, depending on the sponsorship level, or an a la carte sponsorship model commonly used to serve sponsors with specific needs or goals. Um, so flexibility and customization in their sponsorship package are key. So, so you have, uh, I'll talk about each, each one. The tiered sponsorship model is basically the one that we use usually whenever um, you see a sponsorship package. So first of all, you create the tier levels. Um, tiers are commonly labeled as platinum, gold, silver, exhibitor, but you also have a lot of, of creative freedom to name the levels, whatever you think best fits your project theme or brand. And it's your chance to make it sound fun and appealing to sponsors. I'll show you some examples in a bit. 
And then you also you need to decide the quantities per tier. So the next step is to determine how many sponsorship packages of each tier you need to sell in order to achieve your project revenue goals. Um, the more limited the quantity, the more you can charge the, for the sponsorship package because of its exclusivity. So here, what I usually do um, is if I'm doing platinum, gold, silver, and exhibitor or bronze, um, platinum, if you get one platinum sponsor, that should be the sponsor who covers all the expenses of your event. And then for gold, you need two of those to cover your event. For silver, you need four. For exhibitor and for bronze or bronze, you can uh, you need eight. So if you get one platinum sponsor, you should be set for your whole event, and that's how you usually price. Of course, uh, I didn't speak about this, but that's more of project management. You have to put a budget for your event and know how much money you need. And you need also need to leave uh, a bit extra in case of emergencies as well. So once you have your budget, you can determine uh, the tiers and how much you're charging for each uh, level. Now, also, you have to distribute the sponsorship benefits per tier. The higher and more exclusive the tier, the greater number of high value benefits. So I'm going to show some examples now. You can see here, this is one uh, sponsorship uh, event, uh, this for an event, and they divided the different uh, benefits according to pre-event um, recognition, on-site recognition, and post-event recognition. So you have to divide all the benefits that you can give them into three different stages before your event, during, and after. And then you can see here that they didn't go with gold, silver, uh, bronze. They used lion, jaguar, leopard, lynx, and cheetah. So, because this is for a race uh, event, so these are the fastest animals, uh, and the more important animals for them are the more expensive ones. So you can see lion is twenty five thousand. Lion is the king of of the jungle. And then you can see they divided all the different benefits that you can give them. The number of free tickets each tier has different numbers, as you can see. And then before uh, as you go, uh, as you pay less, you get less benefits. This is uh, another one, and you can see here um, they didn't also name them as gold, silver, bronze. They did grassroots advocate, um, organizer, movement builder, community leader, and champion. And champion is the most expensive one, uh, which is five thousand dollars. And then you can see that gets all um, all the benefits, while the grassroots one doesn't get any of the benefits or barely any of the benefits. So this is very important to show them that the more money that they're paying, there is actual benefit that they're gaining and, and not uh, just their logo appearing some, somewhere. So if, if you don't, uh, if you have a particularly specific sponsor that uh, this does not apply to, and they don't care about any of these benefits, then you have to think about the a la carte sponsorship model. Uh, so this approach is an alternative model for sponsor, sponsors looking to achieve specific goals or outcomes. So, so this can include uh, attendee engagement or brand exposure. So for example, uh, when JCR Lebanon a few years back, we wanted to find a venue sponsor um, to host all of our meetings and um, uh, all of our meetings and events. And we didn't want to pay every time we want to have a training. So we partnered with, with Barry Tech, which is uh, an entrepreneurship hub in Lebanon. So they didn't pay us any cash, but they provided us with a venue. But they didn't really care about any of these things. They didn't care about their logo being, or it, it's not very important for them that their logo um, be on, uh, on the posters of our events. What we came up with uh, a solution, a, a specific sponsorship model for them, where we were able to give them training specifically for the, the startups that they work with and their employees that uh, specifically for them and also mentorship. So we gave mentorship from our members, uh, mentors for their, uh, for their startups. So if a person uh, or if a JCI member works in marketing, we would offer marketing mentorship for one of the startups. If they work in uh, uh, different fields and design, then we, we match them with the design mentor. So they were really gaining a, a lot of um, a lot of value from the sponsorship. And in turn, they were providing us with a venue uh, and equipment to host all, all of our trainings for free. So that is uh, an example of an a la carte sponsorship model. You create the value that the sponsor the sponsor wants. 
So also, as, as we spoke be, uh, before, you have to divide them into three different uh, uh, stages of the pre-event. And here, uh, you can read them uh, by yourself later on, uh, some ideas of what would they benefit for each. But I want to talk about uh, innovative sponsor ideas, because you, you, these you usually see in all events, and they're very typical. But now there's a lot of different things that sponsors are getting uh, in events and uh, companies are being very innovative in ways of promoting their sponsors. So things you can do, for example, is an interactive art installation that people can come and, and play with, where it shows uh, it has a direct link to your, to your uh, sponsor. You can also do sponsored live streams. So if you uh, are live streaming your event uh, on Facebook or, or on Zoom or wherever, uh, you can have the sponsor uh, show on all the slides. Uh, on the screen all of the time. You can have a sponsorship break in the middle where you give them kind of like an ad break on TV. Um, you can also do virtual reality installations. These are very popular now. Um, sponsorship lounges where people can go and grab a cup of coffee, but it's sponsored. So let's say uh, Bank of America lounge, for example, it's kind of similar to those in, in, in airports. You can also do Wi-Fi and phone charging, uh, phone charging stations at these events. Uh, that are also branded. You can do uh, branded food and drinks, such as water bottles, cups, uh, plates, different things that are branded. Um, you can do a stress reducing station when people are very tired. They can go and relax on uh, beanbag chairs and uh, have stress balls or things like that. You can also do illuminated smart wall or a table uh, that shows the products of your sponsor, something like that as well. Is very popular all the new technological things you can also do a sponsored social media feed so at your event you can do a twitter wall where people are tweeting about your event with a certain hashtag and that would be branded with, with your sponsor um, you can do short fitness and wellness sessions during um, your event so a break for people to go and meditate or do yoga or something with an instructor and that would be sponsored as well and you can think about unique giveaways that your sponsor would give away uh, that will leave a, a very important uh, or very uh, big impact on the people who are attending. So these are just some ideas. You can Google and see a lot of different ideas uh, for sponsorship benefits that would really attract sponsors to come uh, sponsor your event. So it's not just about uh, putting your logo in the press release or uh, putting a roll-up banner. There's a lot of things that you can do to attract sponsors and give them uh, good benefits. So now that I, we have prepared all of this, our, our sponsorship kit, how do we approach the sponsors? So another thing that you have to create is uh, an initial packet uh, or the first thing that you have to keep in mind is whenever I'm I'm uh, first contacting uh, a sponsor, I should not send them directly the sponsorship kit because the sponsorship kit has all the numbers and you don't want them to be very alarmed or very shocked with your sponsorship uh, packages. What you should do is prepare a short document that could be part of, part of the sponsorship kit that explains your project. Um, so that's two or three pages PDF well-designed and branded, you send it to them uh, that ex and that would explain to them uh, what the project is and why would it be uh, related to their company and how can they benefit from it. So this would contain the project mission statement, who is coming to the event, uh, we talked about these, what, thing, uh, what things or themes you'll be addressing during the project, what the project is, why the project is unlike any other project that already exists, the date, the time, the place, and any logistical information. So a very brief project overview, two or three pages max, you send it to them before sending the packages or anything related to sponsorship. So how, how do you do that? You, you ask them for a call or meeting before you send all the details. Um, it's more likely to increase their interest in your project if you talk to them on the phone or meet face to face, rather than just sending them an email request sponsorship and requesting sponsorship. So this is especially important with large sponsorships or big media partners. Um, you want them to feel like they're working together to co-create an experience. And the best way to do that is start building a relationship rather than simply asking for money. So whatever email you're sending in the beginning, you ask them, please can I get can I get on a call or can we do a meeting either on Zoom or you go to their office to explain to them what your project is. And that is 
the number one way where you get to pick their interest. Because if you're just sending them your, your sponsorship kit from the beginning, they're gonna look at the prices when I say we can't afford this or this is too expensive. Uh, and then they will tell you, I'm not interested. But if you're meeting them face to face and you get to build your brand with them and build a sponsorship with them, they're more likely to sponsor you than not. So avoid the scattered gun approach. This is the gun where you shoot a lot of pellets and it hits a lot of um, targets. So the best way to do this uh, is not to just keep sending emails randomly to, to everyone. You have to be wise in sending out packets, sending, a, sending them only to the companies you honestly think will be interested in your project. So you have to make them individualized and customized. Um, send the potential sponsors on your list, your individualized sponsorship packets. You have to personalize every single email packet and correspondence you send out. It's not just you personalizing hello and you put their name. You... you uh, put why you mentioned their company and why it's important for you to have that company involved. Uh, you can say if someone referred, to, uh, referred you to them, who that person is, and try as much as possible to include uh, personalized details for every packet that you send. Taking the lazy way out will only ensure that your project never gets the sponsorship it, de it deserves. So as I said, you customize your approach to each sponsor. And it's very important to differentiate between sponsors who are paying you $10,000 for your project and a couple of hundred dollars. So what will the person who paid $10,000 uh, gain more and, it, and more than the person who didn't pay that much? So uh, the difference should be very notable and substantial from the perks you offer to the publicity to the way you talk to with them on the phone. Everything needs to be different because if a sponsor that's paying you $10,000 comes and sees a sponsor that's paying you $500 getting the same treatment, they will tell you, okay, I don't want to pay $10,000 anymore. I'll pay 500 and get whatever they're getting. So you always have to make uh, uh, the difference very notable and clear between the different uh, tiers that you do. The best ways to get corporate sponsors is to make your project and sponsor experience worthy of their investment. And if you make them worthy of your investment, they will come back again and sponsor you every year. This is everything that I have for today. Uh, if you have any questions, we can do a Q&A session now. Um, and uh, if you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, this is my profile. I will also put the link um, to the presentation in the chat so you can check it out as well. Thank you, VP Muhammad, for such an interesting uh, session. You know, there's always so much to learn, especially with the advancements and uh, creative ideas that come out uh, in this field. So um, the stage is open uh, for anyone to ask questions. And, uh, you know, we'd love to hear your thoughts. And just um, VP Muhammad is here to help you with anything you may need. Uh, Tatiana, go ahead. Hi, Fifi Muhammad. Oshi, thank you so much. This was no. very detailed and very clear. Very clear in the training. So, Ali, who is no? When you initiate contact with a certain sponsor, um, and a limited amount, uh, limited uh, an amount of people that are reaching out. Um, usually, you allocate one specific person to handle one specific sponsor how do you put them in contact with different teams is there a strategy is a um, certain person to continue with this is it a deal breaker or an unattractive point if someone else takes the lead or what's the best approach Okay, so I think the best approach, and this is something we used in JCI Lebanon before, is to create um, a master sheet of all the sponsors uh, or the, all the potential sponsors and allocate uh, different people for each different sponsor so that uh, people don't contact the same sponsor uh, and it, you get confused. So I'll create this sheet with a sponsor name, their contact information, who is responsible for that program, uh, for that uh, sponsor, and 
what the status of the sponsorship is. And then whenever a different, per if that person fails or cannot work on that sponsor anymore, then you can easily assign a different person and then have that person follow up with the sponsor. And you tell the sponsor, this person is taking over uh, for the other person and it should be fine. It should, it's not a deal breaker at all. Uh, but having that organized in a sheet where you put everyone who you want to contact and try to find their contacts in, in an organized sheet and who's responsible for each uh, sponsor, that way you will be able to organize uh, uh, your yourself and you won't be able, you won't go into any issues. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, Noor Aitani has asked a question in the chat. Uh, so any more general tips for securing food sponsors for events? Um, usually food sponsors or barter sponsors are much easy, much easier to get than cash sponsors. And uh, in the past, that's like the easiest one we used to get uh, with a food sponsor. Um, so it's because they're sharing the food, giving them space to have a well set up table with um, their logo roll up, roll up banners, their branding shown um, very well. Sometimes you've had uh, uh, food sponsors have a burger mascot come in and play with the guests. So as much publicity as you can give them, um, sometimes you can ask them to provide coupons as well. We've had that uh, from uh, different events. Um, whatever ex exposure you can give them so that the, the attendees of your event will later go to that restaurant again. Uh, and that would be very uh, useful to them. So coupon, go, co uh, coupon codes or coupons is very good because they will see that this customer came from your event. And so if enough people came from your event, they will more likely sponsor you again in the future. Maybe Muhammad and this all, but um, yes, the JCI is like one year to lead. Um, so my husband, oh, can you hear me now clearly? Yes, yeah. okay. Since BJCI, it's one year to lead. How do you maintain these relationships with uh, the sponsors from year to year? How do you uh, so this is what I was talking about, is the importance of having a sponsorship team where usually uh, you or you, you give them uh, the torch uh, whenever someone is leaving from the organization or getting promoted to a different role. So try as much as possible when doing a, a sponsorship committee to have uh, people in different levels of the organization. So someone on the national board, someone on the local board, a new member, because that way you'll be able to ensure that more people have met your sponsor. Uh, and then when someone or two of them leave, there's still more people that know them. And then the next year, the same thing, but also create a database of all the information that you have of the sponsors, how much they paid, which events they sponsored, if your relationship is good with them or not, because sometimes a, a sponsor might, uh, uh, you might have a fight with them and you might not want to work with them. So write all of this information in an Excel sheet, a database that you give every year. Uh, and then as much as possible, as I said, introduce different team members of different levels um, to uh, to the sponsor. That way they can build uh, the relationship. And for example, with JCI Lebanon, we've done that with uh, the UN Information Center in Lebanon, where every year it's been di different people who are contacting them and doing projects with them. So they know kind of our structure. Uh, and with Beritech also more or less, it's the same. So try also to explain to the sponsor the structure of JCI and how it works and how you're able to, uh, and that way you'll be able to kind of maintain these relationships as people leave the organization or uh, the positions change. Okay, thank you. Um, Hamad, I have a question actually uh, regarding uh, influencer sponsorship. Okay. Influencer um, for, um, can you hear me? Sorry, yeah. my connection is cutting out. 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, when you want to attract influencers for sponsorships, what are some tips that you can give us to, to attract? Because usually like they require like a lot of money because this is their main source of income. So how can we uh, manage and navigate that? So what we've done in the past with influencers is to either get them to become JCI members, which has happened uh, a few times, or uh, get them to believe in whatever the project that you want them uh, to be involved in. So if the project's about children, try to find uh, mom influencers who are related to that field. If you're doing things about uh, donating, for example, now to, to the crisis uh, in Syria and in Turkey, uh, you get if you can get them to uh, care about the, the project that you're doing, they're most likely do it for free. Uh, so, and you explain to them that you're an NGO, you're not making money, uh, things like that. Uh, because usually whenever they ask for money to do, to do some publicity, um, they it would be for a company that's making money and, and enriching its pockets. For example, the JCI AUB used to get big biggest celebrities um, for the AUB Got Talent event. Uh, and usually they would donate that money to the cancer center. So uh, we've had really big names, uh, big celebrities like Nadine and Jam and others. I can't recall them right now. Just because we were telling them that everything from this uh, event is going to the Children's Cancer Center or specific projects that we're doing. And usually they will be on board without asking for any money. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey. Any other questions? Uh, yes, I have a question. Can you hear me? Sure, go ahead. Uh, okay, so I'm just uh, a bit confused about something. So when we're trying to get sponsors, do we only get the sponsors um, when we need them? Yeah, before we need them for a certain a specific um, event or a project, or do we get the sponsors in general just to have a database of sponsors? And then when we have an event. Usually you need to cater your sponsor to specific events because they were, they're not going to come to you uh, if you don't have anything specific where you can promote them. So you can prepare a list of potential sponsors for the year, but you're not going to contact them unless you have a sponsorship package ready and an event ready and you tell them this is what we need sponsors for. So if you have the time at the beginning of, year, of the year, think about what projects you want to do and what potential sponsors. So it's usually for a specific project or event. It's going to be harder to find a sponsor um, for the organization. Uh, unless like sometimes we are able to find sponsors for travel. So uh for the jci events that are happening throughout the year uh sometimes we'll be able to to get free tickets to to uh, i remember in 2015 they got free tickets for japan for uh, some of the members uh, the active members and then they got discounts for other members so sometimes you're, ab you're able to get some sponsorship we were also working with a company that um, gets sponsorship and they would get a percentage so sometimes you might be able to find that but uh, usually it's harder unless you have a specific project or event that you need a sponsor for. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, sorry, just a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, you mentioned that there's a company which gives, uh, which gets sponsorships for a certain percentage. Uh, can you share the name of the company, please? Uh, I think it was called the sponsorship company but i don't think they're operating anymore oh okay any other but, options available now or no may, maybe if you google i'm not really up to date on that oh okay okay thank you You're welcome any other questions uh since i asked a question on the chat oh. What is the correct response to a sponsor that declined to, uh, to sponsor us? It's very, very important to all, always send a very polite and nice response because you never know whenever they're going to sponsor you again uh, later in the future. They might not sponsor you now, but always have a good response. Tell them 
uh, we appreciate that you took the time to uh, consider this. And also sometimes if you have a big event, even if they're not sponsoring you, invite them so that they come and see the impact of the event so you can build a relationship with them for the future. So as I said today, the very most important thing is that you need to build relationships with the sponsors. It's not going to take one meeting for them to sponsor you. So even if they decline you now, be very nice to them, invite them again, invite them to workshops and trainings uh, that you're doing so that they see the community that you're building and you, they see the impact that you're doing. Okay, any more questions? Okay, um, so if no one has any more questions for now, um, that's fine. Um, VP Muhammad has shared his uh, LinkedIn uh, page here. So um, I'm assuming uh, you can contact him at any time, yes. reach out to him if you have any further questions. Uh, so uh, that's it for today. Thank you all for attending. And uh, this session is recorded and it will be available on our YouTube channel in the upcoming uh, 24 hours. Um, we will send it to you via email and we will also be sending a feedback form um, to everyone. Um, it will only take a few minutes to fill. So uh, if anyone wants to share their email and they haven't shared, like they haven't registered, unless you haven't registered, share your email. But if you have registered, it, we already have it. We will send it, from, we will get them from the registration form. So thank you, VP Muhammad, again. And it was a pleasure having you. We always learn something from you. I'm glad, I'm very happy to see everyone and hopefully be able to see you physically around the world very soon. Yes, inshallah, inshallah. Everyone Thank stay so safe much. and have a good night. Thank you all for attending. Yeah, take them alpha Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Allah. Abdatu. Merci, merci. Thank you.